an epidemic of obesity is spreading. A study for the World Health Organization estimates obesity now affects 18% of the global population, an increase of 50% over the past seven years. But what's the cure for this global malaise? Well, there's good news for couch potatoes who find the thought of going down to the gym for aerobic classes and pumping iron unbearable. Flogging yourself to the point of collapse may give you a glow of achievement, but it might not be as healthy as you thought. Dutch scientists have discovered that regular, moderate exercise as part of a daily routine can burn energy and help shed those extra pounds or kilos more than short, infrequent bursts of intense activity at the gym or on a bike. Until now, everybody was thinking that the only way to get to a healthy energy expenditure was to in incorporate some sports activities in your, in your daily life routines. But that's not really necessary, and that's what's showing up in my results as well very clearly that these high-intensity exercises are short-time short, short -time intervals. Of course, the, your energy expenditure goes up, but it's only half an hour, maybe every other day, while the day is 24 hours. Professor Westeter came to this conclusion through a series of experiments aimed at measuring how much energy was used during a normal day. Volunteers like this university student, Tom, spent anything from a day to a week cut off from the outside world in a sealed respiration chamber here in the lab. The volunteers have little or no privacy. All their activities and everything they consume and expel is closely monitored and measured. The airflow is tightly controlled. The oxygen used by Tom and the carbon dioxide he breathes out are analyzed by a computer. The data reveals the exact number of calories burned by Tom during his rather low intensity spell in the respiration chamber. Though he may not have been doing much, Tom has made an important contribution to science. If you uh, want to know, for example, how much a person is uh, using in his energy balance um, in relation to his uh, feeding pattern or his, the amount of energy that he takes in with his food, you can see if he's either gaining weight or losing weight. You can see how much uh, exercise costs. For example, if you do a Tour de France simulation inside these rooms, you can actually uh, measure how much energy the cyclists need to perform the task he is doing, and then uh, see to it that the uh, amount of food that he gets exactly matches the request that he has. Will you drink the idea is to measure this energy exchange by measuring the, uh, the fire of life, as you might say, the amount of oxygen that the subject takes in and the amount of carbon dioxide that he produces, the actual burning of the food in the body. And this means that you have to isolate the, uh, the subject in a room where you can measure the gas exchange, the exact amount of gases that this subject takes in and takes out. The researchers say their experiments show the benefits of moderate activity. Their message is, anything you do is fine. If it's low intensity, do it more frequently, but move around. Nelcher is one of the many student volunteers who've helped the scientists reach their findings about the importance of steady, moderate exercise in weight control. One of the tests she undergoes requires Nelcher to be fully submerged in a water tank. She must breathe through a tube. The volume of her body is measured by the amount of water she displaces from the tank. More fat means more water is displaced. These measurements are taken over a period of time as the experiment progresses to detect whether her body fat ratio changes in line with the researcher's findings. She then moves on to the next stage of the experiment. A special instrument developed by Professor Westerterp is strapped onto her waist. It's known as a triaxial accelerometer. It measures Nelch's movements and then translates them into the number of calories burned. Oxygen and carbon dioxide levels are also recorded to give further indications of her energy consumption. The triaxial accelerometer will tell Nelcher and the researchers 
whether her energy use is above, below, or consistent with somebody of her age and sex. But what's most important as far as Professor Westerthep and his team are concerned is that the accelerometer monitors the rate at which she burns off calories throughout the day during her normal activities, not just when she's exercising hard. If she was to spend the rest of the day sitting in front of a computer terminal, her average energy use would be relatively low, despite the intense but short workout on the exercise line. Rather than going to a gym every other day for half an hour, you try to incorporate some more physical activity in your daily routines, because that's something you can keep up far easier than going to a gym every other day because you forget about these things, and daily life is going on every day again. And then you could combine this healthy food intake also with a healthy activity pattern. And the healthy activity pattern would just be that you uh, maybe uh, stand up and, and walk a little bit during your work during the day. When you have got an office job, for instance, you walk up and down the printer, or you go to have a look at your neighbors next door instead of sitting behind and communicating by email. And that's these, all these simple things, when you move through the building, you go up one stair, uh, one stair up, you don't take the elevator, you take the stairs. And also when you move around outside, you, uh, you can take uh, a bike or you can walk, instead of taking a bus for short distances, for instance. Just have to lie down for 30 minutes. Okay. We all spend around a third of our lives sleeping. Professor Westertep's research has also explored energy consumption during this usually most hidden part of our lives. While this subject is at rest, his respiration is constantly analyzed, his oxygen and carbon dioxide levels measured. This is to assess how much energy people burn off in their sleep and try to discover how this might affect energy use during the day. One of the interesting things that we can uh, see in these rooms is the uh, resting metabolic rate. The, 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 during the night, we can actually monitor the amount of energy that the subject is taking up. And we can look at the energy metabolism of the subject in relation to diets and in relation to exercise. For example, if you, if you were to take a, a candy bar and uh, you would eat it and think, I go for a walk to take away this energy, well, that's not the case. It's, uh, the, the exercise involved in this is uh, actually not burning the calories from this uh, candy bar. Your, your daily energy pattern is much more uh, determining that part of the, uh, of the equation. Those from the no pay, no gain school of fitness will take a lot of convincing that moderate exercise is healthier. With workers becoming more and more sedentary and desk bound, the world appears to be gripped by an epidemic of inertia. But a little sustained exercise goes a long way in improving health, which means we should all be getting on our bikes, even if we don't pedal very hard.